As musicians, we are constantly trying to evolve our relationship with our instruments to make them a more fluid extension of our physical selves. And when it comes to synthesizers, Aftertouch is an extremely useful tool in helping that process along. A lot of keyboards have some form of standard Aftertouch, but the polyphonic kind is a rare and precious thing. With polyphonic Aftertouch on the Lumitone, our ability to express our musicality widens even further. So let's take a look and see just how this incredible tool helps us meld with our machine. Hello again, folks, Dave here. And today we are talking about a wonderfully expressive feature of the Lumitone, polyphonic aftertouch. Now, if you're not familiar with aftertouch, it's a way of controlling your virtual instruments or synth parameters by applying further pressure beyond the travel of the key. This works by having a sensitive pad at the bottom of a key that in the case of synths will send a control voltage and in the case of MIDI controllers, we'll send a MIDI message. We talked a bit about sending MIDI messages in my last video, all about continuous controllers. So feel free to check that out if you haven't yet. Now in the world of aftertouch, there's basically two different types. The basic aftertouch, also referred to as channel aftertouch, will send the average amount of pressure applied to whichever keys are held down. But polyphonic aftertouch, is specific to each key. Sending the individual pressure amount you apply to each key, allowing every key to act as its own node of expression. And this is more rare than channel aftertouch. But thanks to the Limitone being armed with hall effect sensors in every key, it is more than up for the task. All right, so in order to take advantage of polyphonic aftertouch, there's really only a few simple steps. First, we wanna make sure the Lumitone mapping you're gonna use has it enabled. And we can do this using the editor software. So let's transition to the screen. All right, so if you don't know your way around this software, you can check out my video all about that. But it's really as simple as this. Go over to the general settings here, make sure that polyphonic aftertouch box is selected. And then by going up here to the live editor button, we'll have the option to send the editor layout to the actual Lumitone. Now just save it to your Lumitone by selecting a preset and holding it down for a few seconds until the indicator blinks. Wham, we're now ready to use polyphonic aftertouch. But remember that enabling polyphonic aftertouch is specific to each mapping you use. This allows you to enable it for certain mappings where you wanna use it and maybe disable it on mappings where you don't wanna accidentally engage it. So let's take a look at using this with our virtual instruments. When I think of polyphonic aftertouch, the first thing that comes to my mind is the highly treasured synthesizer, Yamaha CS80, famously used by the legendary Greek composer Vangelis in his score for Blade Runner. Now this synth has tweakable polyphonic aftertouch parameters built right into its faders. So this is a good place to start. Now there are different virtual emulators of the CS80 out there. Today we'll be using the Archeria version. So this isn't a video all about the glorious and triumphant beauty that is the CS80. There are already videos detailing that, but let's use it to show you just a piece of what polyphonic aftertouch can do. The CS80 has a designated section all for touch response right here. Choosing the amount of brilliance, which uh, controls the filter cutoff and the level of the brilliance in the after portion of the touch response section, will get you after touching basically instantly. We also have further global aftertouch parameters you can tweak here. Let's go ahead and just try this out. Remember the aftertouch is engaged by simply applying more pressure after the full travel of the key. And notice how each key is engaging the aftertouch expression on its own time. So I can't overstate enough just how sensitive and dynamic the aftertouch pads feel at the bottom of the keys. It turns playing a virtual instrument into feeling like I'm wielding some godlike power. 
you know, just reacting to my every impulse. It almost feels like I'm magically blasting sounds out of my fingertips. So now let's take a look at controlling specific parameters. All right, so for this example, I'll be using a really great soft synth called Surge. I can't recommend this enough. It's an open source virtual instrument put together by folks who clearly know what they're doing and they're giving it to you for free. Super flexible, it sounds great. And if you're looking to take advantage of Lumitone's microtonal abilities, this tuning editor here is you fully covered on that. But today we are talking about polyphonic aftertouch. Maybe we want to use the Lumitone with the same physical flexibility of a guitar. Well, there is that. But how would we go about using polyphonic aftertouch to bend a note like we would on a guitar? Okay, so Surge makes assigning polyphonic aftertouch parameters such a breeze. So down here in the routing bar, you can just click poly AT. Now we see every parameter that we can assign to polyphonic aftertouch has turned blue. If we want to accomplish a guitar-like note bend, we probably want to assign the pitch to the polyphonic aftertouch. Now, we can assign the pitch to the whole instrument here, but I'm going to assign it just to this one oscillator to make it a bit more subtle. So heading over to the pitch slider here, choosing where we put the blue slider will tell our polyphonic aftertouch where the maximum value will be set. In the case of bending a note like a guitar, we probably just want to have it slightly above its original pitch. And now when you engage a key's aftertouch, we get the desired effect. And given that it's polyphonic aftertouch, you can play as many other keys as we'd like and only bend the ones that we apply for the pressure to. Obviously we can do this with an array of different parameters. You know, the possibilities start to feel endless. You know, everything from filter cutoffs, resonance, LFOs, envelopes, so much more can be assigned and ready to be engaged simply by applying pressure. So let's say we just want to mess around with a bunch of stuff at once. Before you engage poly AT, right, you can choose your minimum value by choosing where that gray fader is going to be. And once you engage poly AT, faders turn blue. Choose your maximum of that cutoff. There's your range. And maybe let's tweak shape a bit. Go down to the LFO and why not? Let's just crank all of it. Just max it out there. All right, let's see how that sounds. So the limits of what you can do with this are only bound by your imagination. The majority of software sense and virtual instruments will allow you to route poly aftertouch to modulate pretty much any aspect of your sounds. Polyphonic aftertouch provides a way to communicate with your Lumitone where it starts to feel like it's an extra superhuman limb you acquired in some sort of nuclear accident. And okay, that's a bit dramatic, but the physical feedback you get is something to be experienced and it's hard to put into words. Lumitone's different modes of expressions don't just stop there. In the last video, I covered its unique ability to turn any key into a continuous controller. And in the next video, I'll be talking about its one of a kind feature invented just for the Lumitone called LumaTouch. So if you want to catch that, hit like and subscribe. We'll see you then.